Okay, so you will get a piece of paper and a tray of paint. You get what you get. You don't get upset. Everybody gets a, a different color. Some people are going to be the same. You're going to write your first name, your last name, and your class. I write 2Z because there is no 2Z. Then you flip your paper over. Okay, so you're going to take your brush, you're going to dip it into the white only. White only is first. And I'm going to put a circle on my paper. This is going to either be the sun or the moon of your paper, depending on what you want it to be. I do dip back into the white a couple of times. Actually, I found I didn't like the way that brush was, so I'm going to give you guys a different brush that's easier. So I dip into the white and I make a nice circle with my new brush. These are brand new brushes, just opened this morning. So, yeah. Then I'm going to dip in, get one scoop of whatever color you have and put it into the white. You're going to mix that really, really well until it's all one color. You don't want any streaks in it. You don't want any places that are still really white or any places that are a different color. You want it all to be one solid color. So notice I'm, I'm, I've got to mix it up quite a while. After that is all mixed, you're going to go right around your white circle. Try not to get into the circle too bad, but you do want to go right up to the edge. You don't want any of your color paper showing um, between the white and the tint. So when you add white to any color, you get a tint of that color. T-I-N-T, -T, tint. I might be asking you about that. Notice how I'm doing at least one hand width away from the sun. And notice how I'm getting it on my desk. That happens because you have to color the whole paper. So for the next one, you want to get one scoop, two scoops, three scoops of color. And then you're going to mix it really well. Any color plus white is a what of that color? Any color plus white is a tint of that color. If you said tint, you are correct. So we are working out different colors of tint. So I'm using orange. So all of the colors that I'm doing except for the white are tints of orange. The first one was a very light tint. This is like a darker tint. So I'm going right on the edge of that um, last tint that I did. And I'm going to go pretty far out into the paper because there's only one more color that I'm going to do. So I want this to be pretty big. At least like two thirds of the paper. So I'm going like maybe two hands out from the sun, the the last color, maybe a hand and a half out from the last color, but I'm coloring everything all the way to the edges. Notice I'm getting it on my desk. That's okay, because we're going to clean that up later, but we do want to cover the entire paper with this paint. Okay, so now I'm going back. I'm getting one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to mix, oh my gosh, I got six? What? Six? Okay, I'm going to mix that up pretty well so that there's no um, difference in the color. I don't want light parts. I don't want dark, dark parts. I want it to be all one color. It does take a while to mix this. So please take your time. We have plenty of time. 
Okay, now that it's well mixed, I have to move my drying rack away because it's covering part of my paper and my phone is actually sticking out of the drying rack taking this video. So now I'm going to take that last color. I could have mixed that a little better. I still see some light spots and some dark spots, but I just start painting the last little bit of the paper. So I'm painting everything remaining. I'm trying only to touch the last color a little bit, just on the very edge. You don't want to see any of the color of the paper left. So you are going to get it on your desk. Don't worry about it. Your, your name is already on the back, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, this paper is very soggy. It needs some support. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another piece of paper and I'm going to put it underneath that piece of paper to support it. Okay, so when you put your art on the drying rack, you are going to put it on one of these pieces of cardboard and you're going to put it on so that two pieces can fit on each cardboard. So notice I'm only taking up half of the cardboard. Another project is going to go there. When you clean your desk, you're going to get a paper towel and you're going to get it half wet, only half. Half of it is dry. You're going to fold it in half and mop up what you can with one side of that. Mop it up. Now, if your rag gets too dirty and it starts just leaving streaks of the color, you're going to have to fold it to a clean part. So right now it's too dirty. I'm going to fold it to a clean part and continue. So then I'm going to get up all the things that I can get up. And if I have to fold it again, I fold it again. And now I'm there's going to be residue on your desk. Hopefully you only take one piece of paper towel, but if you need more than one, that's fine. Um, you just keep folding to a clean part and folding to a clean part until you can get up all that residue. When you're putting your stuff away, you're going to have your dirty brush. You don't have to clean it. Just put it brush side down in the dirty brush bin. And then with your tray, you're going to put that in the water cup bin, just like it is with all that paint in it. I'm probably going to have water in that yellow bin, so it's probably going to go into water. 